This update will be absolutely massive. It includes mail days from the past year. It includes cards that I picked up in Japan. It includes pretty much every single binder that I'm working on at the moment and how I'm planning to expand forward in the future. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, this is the Gardner Moonlight Binder. It's a discontinued binder that I produced. If you guys want to pick up your own, you can pick them up at strictlysealed.com. It's the new line under Cardware. And the role is to pretty much bling out your collection in the binder. The sleeves not only color code to the sets that we see in Yu-Gi-Oh, but they also do a great job dividing certain sections in your binder. But plug aside, let's get into the cards. We're starting off with the video games. This is my promo binder and we have nothing changed here. I did pick up these two. I'm not sure if they were included in the last binder update, but I did get them now. I don't know what to put here. I was thinking of putting the Slifer from the YMA magazine, but the problem is, is that I just feel like it belongs more with like the books promos. So I'm not sure. What do you guys suggest to put here? We have the GBI secrets. We have PCK, ROD. We have the GBI ultras here. So these are European cards and these are actually what we see in this set here. So this is the North American release, the Zoa Metal Zoa. This is the Fossbound Kingdom. And then this was the European release. So they had completely different cards. Here we have DOD. This is the same as we saw in North America, except Mesmeric Control here replaces the Winged Dragon of Raw. Here we have nothing really changed. We have like the GX cards starting to be introduced here. These are like the Tag Force games as well as every other GX game. We finally plugged in GX06. This is arguably the hardest Tag Force game to complete. And I did pick up a bribe. The way that I picked this up was somebody was selling the video game with the promo sealed inside. I cracked it open and now we have a fresh copy. I have these two as well. They're on my TCG player linked in the description. Here we move on to Tag Force 4 and this is where we start introducing the 5Ds promos. The only ones I'm missing from Tag Force are this one, Tag Force 5. I'm not sure why I'm missing them. They are incredibly cheap, but the problem is, is that they're hard to find in mint condition. So I'm still waiting on those. I think Liberty at last is the most expensive one. Next, we have the rarest video game promos of all time. This is the Blizzard Dragon Metal Shooter Death Mosquito. And now we have the last Prismatic Secret Rare release that we had in the TCG, and that is World Championship 2004. We move on to 2005, six, seven here, and then eight. The only one I'm missing here is Dimensional Prison, and that's because this is probably like the most playable video game card. It's absolutely a staple in the TCG, especially Edison format. It's so hard to find a mint copy. Even the video game, bro, it's so hard to find one sealed. We have Infinity Arch Fiend. We picked up the super rare set that goes along with them. This set has a super rare variant as well and there is a seller on ebay uk they're selling sealed promo packs of this in the super rare variant i was thinking of picking up a few so that i can see like the best copies and put them in my binder here and i am going to do that eventually but i just haven't had any mail come from the uk so i didn't really want to like put the money there and just have it sit for like let, until it becomes worth it to ship a bunch of stuff but yeah, that's World Championship 2010, 2011. And I believe that this is the last World Championship game that they released. Next, we have Wheelie Breakers. And I finally got super rare variants of these. These are way harder to find than the ultra rares. The ultra rares are still dumb expensive and they're still considered max rarity. So most people actually like pay a premium for these. But these are very, very hard to come by. And you're going to see a theme here because when we get to this set, these cards, bro, I have been looking for months. I can't believe I found not only one, but two sealed copies of this play pack. I paid a lot for these and I ended up basically opening one of them to get this set. And then I also picked up this one. Shout out to someone in Discord. He hooked me up with this one and this is where these come out of. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these, but for now, I'm, I'm really happy because I would say that this is probably the second or third rarest video game of all time in Yu-Gi-Oh! The first one is definitely Dual Almanac, and I would say this is probably the second one. And then the third rarest would be Tag Force 3. But maybe I should do a video. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see a video where I rank all of the video games that came out for Yu-Gi-Oh! in terms of rarity and just desirability in general. 
That's a great idea. I'm with that. This is another rare set. I think I showed this one before, but this is an exclusively European release and not a lot of people know about it. This was the last game that they released other than like the Duel Links game that they released later on, which I don't really collect after Zexel. This set is very, very hard to come by. I think I sold like the sealed promo packs for like 60, 70 bucks. The cards are not expensive at all. Like they're dumb cheap, but they're quite hard to come by. Like they're reasonably difficult to find in mint condition because they're printed in Europe. But that's the last video game set that I have. And by the way, you might think like, oh, what's on the first page? Well, here I have some plans for what I want to do. And you guys will see that soon. But basically, I'm leaving this page blank because I like the way that it opens up like this. But yeah, next up, we have BPT promos. Here we have mint condition of one to six. We have reverses. I am missing two. This is the reverse red eyes and reverse Lord of D. I looked at my original ones and they were not as clean as I would like. So I took them out. I actually sent them in for grading. They got PSA nines, but <laughs> yeah. Um, here we have the second set of BPT. We move on to master collection. And I decided to use this here because I wanted to break up the BPT set with the CT set because there's no way to put these otherwise. So I'm using these as kind of like the divider between CT and BPT. And then here we have like the misprints of CT. This is the only set that came with misprint, so quite happy about that. And now we start with the secret rares from CT. We have CT1, CT2, CT3. I'm pretty sure there was nothing new added to these. CT4, CT5, and then this is where it kind of like gets weird. So like these are CT5, this is CT5, CT5, CT5. <laughs> And then we have CT6 here, and then these are all CT6. And then here we have more CT6. These are all packs that come with first edition packs on the inside. So like this one, this one, Montage, Nitro, and Goyo, they all seed uh, Duelist Genesis first edition. These two are the only ones that seed Crossroads of Chaos. These two, as well as I believe Blackwing, and these two, I think. All seed uh, Ancient Prophecy and then one, two, and three seed Stardust Overdrive. Those are all like the first edition packs. I thought this was a really cool dynamic and it made a little bit of a chase for 5D's cards. Next we have the sets where they pretty much scrapped the old Secret Rare foiling and they introduced the new one. However, I'm not really a fan of the new Secret Rare. I really like the old one. Luckily, the TCG in Europe ended up keeping the old traditional secret rare and I finally picked up Majestic Red Dragon. Got this one in the UK, someone packed it and they listed it. Paid a lot though, <laughs> I paid like, I think like 25 bucks or something. And then these guys I had before, I'm still looking for these and then these are pretty much checked off. These ones I would like European copies of eventually but I just haven't been able to find any. Over here we'd have Starter's Dragon Assault Mode and by the way as you can see, these are all yellow sleeves, these are all the tin cards. Okay, we'd have Stardust Dragon Assault Mode in Ultra Rare. This is the Secret Rare here. They're both different tins. This is the green tin. I believe this is the blue tin. Starlight Road. This one was one of those cards that was affected by the Euro Dynamics. So I had to find a Euro copy of this card. And then these two are just Ultra Rares. This card pretty much represents the hardest tin to find in Yu-Gi-Oh! And even though the card is very abundant, it's actually quite hard to find this one in mint condition because it was a staple back in the day. Then we move on to the Elemental Hero Collection. Nothing's changed here and I still don't know what to put here. Here we have the UBP. Exodia is still missing the head. Put Dark Pile in there. Picked up White Horn Dragon. I'm pretty sure you guys saw that before though. And then here I'm missing the Sparkman in Ultra Rare. The alternate art that came in the structure deck. Nothing new here, I don't believe. And then here I'm missing Gores and Baboon from Retro Pack. Two, I believe they're called. Yeah, the Retro Pack 2, Gorge and Baboon. And then here we have the special editions from Duelist Pack. I wasn't planning on keeping these, but I did need three slots here and they are secret rares. Secret rare to me is the best rarity of all time. So I, I, I had to have them, you know? As you can see though, I did start taking out the special editions from like the other sets. And I'm not sure if this was a good decision or not, it does leave me with a lot of empty space, but I just had no enjoyment collecting special editions from like the GX era. 
Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like the cursed mass beast from Tactical Evolution. Like, I just didn't really like looking at those cards, to be honest. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's the super rare. I'm really not a fan of super rare, bro. I, I think it has to be ultra rare and up. Either way, what I'm thinking is I should bring back the like the EEN, the SOIs, but I don't know if I want to collect like the other ones, bro. Like it, it's just, I, I felt like they were too bulky, you know, like these, even though a lot of them are bulk, like there's no denying that. I felt like those were like a special type of bulk, like uh, the, <laughs> the real bulky bulks. <laughs> Okay, I, I just wasn't a fan. Like I felt like they took up too much space for them being like 25 cent cards. So that, that's the main issue I had with them. But there are some really nice cards. Like for example, we have the Strike of Neo special edition with like the alternate art, Cyber and Dragon, stuff like that. I, I'm, I'm a fan of, but it's just the super rare aspect. It's the fact that like I see those special editions all the time. Something about it just bogged down the quality of the binder. I felt like these ones at least every single product is at least over 200 bucks right so so it made like the promos inside worth it versus like these special editions like you can find them for 50 dollars and i don't know i'm just not a fan let me know what your thoughts are should i bring them back like should i continue and not be uh like too too picky about it but i don't know this is pretty much brings me to the last set though because in terms of promos there wasn't anything other than book promos then so this is uh Yu-Gi-Oh r so these are the four cards and every single one of them is pack fresh shout out to the member in the discord who hooked me up with this one this is the slide for the sky dragon that i wanted to put in that slot that i told you about but this spot is empty because there was no other book promos this is the three versions of barrel dragon we have regular secret rare we have reverse secret rare and then we have the prismatic secret rare here. Then we get to GX. This is completed. This is arguably the hardest set to find in terms of like being able to find the sets in mint condition simply because of this, 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 and sometimes this. Okay. But these three, especially this was max rarity for a very long time. Everybody ran this card. This is like the cheaper version of the light and darkness dragon from retro pack two. And then this one is widely considered max rarity. Very, very hard to come by books. And then these two are also, I would say, that, like the second rarest books to find. So yeah, these ones, very, very happy to have them checked off. And then we start into Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. I'm missing a lot. If you guys have these in mint condition, DM me. I'll pay you like, if the card is 10 bucks, I'll pay you like 20 bucks. I don't mind. Just shoot me a message if you have them in mint condition. And then we get to, uh, this is like the Zexol manga. And then this is like the only exception where I'm going to collect brains is the books. Because I feel like those books are like, they're, they're so contained, you know, like it's basically the, ascent. I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm coping. I just think that <laughs> these are worth collecting. So those are like the last two uh, sets of promos I have to start and then it's pretty much empty from here But I think most of you guys would agree that I should bring back the special editions I don't know man I, I just felt like they were taking up too much space But then again, like I, I have a lot of space and then here I have just like filler with like past structure deck that I open I, I might actually also do like the deck cards so like I would have SDK and then the two supers SDY two supers something like that but I'm not sure because later on it becomes only two cards are holographic and that makes it very problematic to collect. It's very annoying. So like the reason I liked all these so much is because they always came in sets of three or six, right? So yeah, I mean, that's the promo binder so far. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we have the Shonen Jump slash Lost Art promos. And I might actually take these and put them with like the promo binder. I feel like these deserve it, but I'm not sure if they'll fit because there's like actually a lot of cards. But we start off here with Shonen Jump. You guys have seen this before. A lot of it is repeat. So again, it's been a long time since, uh, since like I did the last video. So, you know, bear with me if I repeat stuff, but pretty much Anything in pink sleeve is pack fresh mint. Anything with purple sleeve needs replacement. So here we have everything. I'm only missing hero ocean and then wh whatever comes here. Missing three cards here. I need a replacement exodus or exodius. Here we need replacements for all, all of these. Um, need replacements for these two. Need replacement for this. But yeah, like the shonen jump cards, in my opinion, are some of the best cards in terms of collecting promos on a budget. They're super iconic and they look amazing. And they always sprinkle like badass cards like this, the Slifer, the Sky Dragon. Like, look at that. These are the debut cards for these, eh? Like, think about that. 
That's amazing. And then here we have more cards. And then this is the last page. We move on to here and then we get to Lost Art. I'm missing a few Exodia pieces. I need a replacement Solemn Judgment because this one came damaged. And then I need a, I don't remember what goes here. Number 18. Here's Lost Art. And then they recently brought back Lost Art promos. So I'm going to be definitely slotting stuff in here. I'm going to start chasing them again. And I believe this was the last one since they took that little hiatus. So I'm going to be definitely filling these up here. So that's the promo binder for Shonen Jump as well as The Lost Arts. Let's do some movie magic. Three, two, one. All right. So this is the complete set binders. These ones, I, I don't think I'm going to be going through real quick. These are already completed. I don't really need to cover them. But yeah, this is, uh, I'm missing a DCR pack here, for example, or actually IOC pack. But yeah, these are like just standard hollows um, from the first 11 sets. These are the only sets that I basically have completed, including commons and everything, because I, I just, you know, they're my favorite sets of all time. They're, you know, iconic. Let's get this out of the way, but this filled up three of my binders, the blue, green, and pink, and it pretty much covers LOB all the way up to Ancient Sanctuary. All right, next up we have this binder is actually really, really special because this was pretty much started after I came back from Japan because I found so many cards. So let's begin. As you can see, this is the Duelist Genesis. Now the Duelist Genesis is kind of weird and I'm not sure how I want to like place everything because what these sets had was pretty much eight ultis and then 10 secret rares, right? So they fit like this, but it's missing the ghost rare. It's missing the special sneak peek cards that come with each set, which is pretty much like, for example, like Parshath here is a secret rare. This one would actually come as a super rare when it comes in the sneak peek. So I wanted to include those as well. I'm just not sure how I want to I do it because if I go into like the 12 pocket, it would be 24 cards, right? So let's just say here we have 18 for Duelist Genesis, then we have the Ghost Rare, that's 19, Sneak Peek, that's 20, the pack itself is 21, and then we have three slots empty. So I'm not sure what I want to do. Maybe I'll put another pack. So let's just say we put another pack. We still are missing two slots and every single page is going to be missing two slots. If you guys have any suggestions, maybe I'll do like the special editions of Duelist Genesis. Hmm. Those come with two cards. You know what? Maybe I actually figured it out. <laughs> maybe that's what I'll do. So I'll probably put those in the 12 pocket binders then. That will actually be a complete master set. Figured it out actually. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a quick yap session about how I'm going to do my binder, but basically Duelist Genesis picked up everything here in Japan and everything here is minty. I mean, so actually, no, not everything was picked up in Japan. Like these two, I pulled myself, but these were picked up in Japan. I actually picked up a second copy of this. And if somebody wants it, you can DM me. Crossroads of Chaos, picked this up in Japan. Super happy about it. The only thing is, is that it has like a small, small, small ding at the back there. Otherwise it's clean. I was super disappointed. I paid a lot, but... I mean, this card is dumb expensive and I don't think it will ever lose max rarity value. So, so nice. This is one of the most beautiful cards ever. And then we have two ultis here. We have two secrets here. These were also all from Japan. This is Crimson Crisis, the third set in 5Ds. We have two ultis and that's all I have from here. Raging Battle, picked up these in Japan. Mint. This was a mint, mint, mint card. Picked this up in Japan as well. Also minty. By the way, the reason that these are like white and for example, this one was red is because I actually want to put orange here. It's just, I haven't had any excess orange sleeves yet. So when I open a, the next pack, I'll probably fill it up with orange. Here we have Ancient Prophecy. And as you can see, I am missing a lot here. Uh, this goes for like all of the 5D sets. Again, if you have any of these in like mint condition, even if it's off center, it's okay. If you have them in mint condition or like pack fresh condition, you know, maybe the, there's like very, very, very slight wear, but like it can't be anything like super noticeable hit me up i'm very very interested in picking up some of your cards next up we have stardust overdrive and the reason that i have a lot of these is because i opened a shit ton of these packs like i opened maybe it was back when like the tins were like 30 dollars a piece i opened maybe like 40 tins 50 tins so like i, I <laughs> i'm pretty much uh like i i checked off a lot i actually also had the iatos and the christia but i ended up grading them 
and they ended up getting like PSA 10s. It was back before like I was binder collecting. So these were just not worth grading. So they kind of just sat in the bulk pile. I, I never really graded anything here except those two because those had like a huge premium. Unfortunate because those were actually like perfect condition as well. Here we have absolute power force missing pretty much everything. And this is like the black pack here we have the white pack and you know obviously like phantom darkness is the black pack and then you have light of destruction so this is the same thing here shining darkness again missing a ton picked up a bunch of these in japan mint condition very cheap card but you know it's it's still a shining darkness secret rare you know i have to give it respect pen Japan, Japan, I pulled this one like a long time ago. This is one of my favorite cards of all time. I don't think I have seen like a more beautiful <laughs> waifu card in my opinion. Like this Chaos Goddess is probably like, yeah, it's probably like up there with top five artworks of all time in terms of just detail and beauty. Drev, I opened like 200 packs of these. <laughs> this is what I had other than what I got graded. I had a Valor that I pulled as well. Unfortunately, I had to grade it. And then, yeah, this is what remains. But yeah, all of these were pulled by me. And then this one actually was picked up in Japan, but everything else was pulled. This one was cracked from Ruxin, but I did pick up a mint copy in Japan as well. So, you know, if somebody wants it, you can DM me. These are mint condition, picked up in Japan, Japan, Japan. <laughs> this one I bought from Casual Yugi stuff. He had a box break, bought that from him. And then check it out. We're getting into Zexel. I started collecting Zexel cards and these had the same format as 5Ds. So we had eight ultis and 10 secret rares, which is a really, really nice layout for this binder. But again, I think most likely what I'm gonna do is bring them into the 12 pocket binders that I have. But this is uh, what I have from Generation Force. Here we have Photon Shockwave. I have most of the ultis. I'm only missing like the cover card and then one more here. Here we have Order of Chaos, a lot of them. Again, everything here, everything. I never owned a single card in Zexel. Picked up everything in Japan. Here we have Galactic Overlord. And then we have, what is this? Return of the Duelist, Abyss Rising. And then I don't remember what this one's called, CBLZ. I don't remember the set name, but yeah, I found these two very happy. Again, everything is in Japan, like literally didn't buy anything. And then these are the extra sets that I have not uh, even begun <laughs> trying to complete. But yeah, these are the extra ones and I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it. Most likely what I'll probably do is shift them to my 12 pockets and my 12 pockets have 24 pages, which is four more extra pages. So it should be pretty good that way. But yeah, this is my 5Ds collection and my Zexo collection started. I'm super, super happy about these and yeah, checked off a lot of cards. Again, if you have anything that you have pulled and it has to be North American, by the way, I don't want anything European. If you have anything that you pulled, DM me. I am very interested. If it's a $1 card, I'll pay you $10 for it. So <laughs> you can make really good money. But yeah, let's move on to the next binder. All right, so now we get into probably the most expensive binder, the binder that deserves <laughs> the money behind it, and that is TP. So as you can see, I have removed the commons and the rares. And the main reason for this is because these cards are so expensive, especially in mint condition, which these are, it ended up taking too much space to have the commons. So I do have the commons and the rares. It's just, I put them in baggies. And I put them in like a big box. I have pretty much everything from TP one to eight when it comes to the commons and the rares. It's just, I'm not gonna be including them in the binder. I think if you're collecting just TP, I don't think it's a bad idea to, you know, collect the commons and the rares in the binders. But for me, like I just have too much stuff, you know? So I, I've got to consolidate. I've got to make it easier to pick up the value and, you know, run if <laughs> something was on fire, you know? So anyway, let's start. I'm missing the packs here. So this is what I'm going to be putting. TP1, 2, and 3. And yeah, pretty much here everything is mint. As you can see, I'm actually missing some cards. And that's because I'm a complete idiot. So the story with these is that I thought I had doubles, okay? I told you guys that, you know how I usually do when I have a double, I basically take out my binder copy, I send them both into grading, and then whichever one gets the nine, I crack and put it back in the binder, and then the 10 I sell, right? And then if I get another copy in, I do the same thing again, because that's just how PSA works, bro. It's a big scam, but <laughs> you know, sometimes you gotta work the system. The main issue with these though, is that I thought I had doubles of these, and then I subbed all of them in, and all three of them got PSA 10s, and I had no doubles, and now I'm like, super shaking my head because bro like 
<laughs> how am I gonna find these cards again in mint condition, man? Like, that's gonna be such a nightmare. It's just a big sigh. This one, I actually had doubles of, and then I sent it in. One of them got the 10, one of them got the nine. And then I don't know what happened to my PSA nine decree, but when I cracked it, it was like, it was in terrible shape. Like, I don't believe I subbed it in like that. I'm pretty sure PSA damaged it, but I can't be sure because I didn't take pictures beforehand, but I don't believe that the one that I sent in was like, it still got the nine, but it had like way too many scratches on the back to get the nine. Like it, it is what it is. I need a replacement Royal decree now, unfortunately. So yeah. Uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I am on the lookout now. If you have a decree, hit me up. I'm very interested. But yeah, these ones also SMH. We have TP7, TP8, all complete PSA 10. And then here we have the McDonald's pack because I just simply don't have anything to put here. And again, you can see I shifted like the colors. So the McDonald's pack is a silver pack. These ones, I wanted to do black, but I just love the yellow sleeve so much that I... I <laughs> These are some of my most prized cards. Like I absolutely love TP. It's like the ultimate promo cards in my opinion. I feel like the yellow suits them, you know, cause they're gold, you know, I, I love gold. I love the gold sleeves, but yeah, missing the packs here. <laughs> the McDonald's pack is just gonna be a silver wrapper. It doesn't say anything on it. Here we start with CP. This is the part that you have not seen before. I basically weighed all the packs I had with CP and I ended up opening the heavy ones. I'm selling the light ones on my website. These are the pulls and I have some extras. If you guys are interested, I have like a couple of these, couple of this, and I have one of these. These ones, I don't know how I'm gonna get CP, bro. Like I, I, I <laughs> that, that's another problem for another day. CP2 as well. CP2 is disgusting. Very, very difficult to find. CP3, 4, 5. I, I don't know what I'm going to do to get them, but yeah. CP7, I picked these up from Casual Yugi stuff. He opened a box and I, I picked them up from him. CP8, I cracked these from Ruxin. He ended up opening a box, I believe. And I, I think this one got the 10 while these ones got the nine. So I bought the nines off of him, cracked all of them. This one got the 10. I'm not going to pay 10 price. So yeah, that's the CP collection. And then here, what I plan to do is put up the CP6 ultras. If I'm ever rich enough, I'll probably pick up like that. <laughs> the loose copies of those CP6 ultras and, and slot them in here. But that's like a, that's like a five to ten year goal because they're so rare. Now we start with Turbo Pack. Turbo Pack it has one ulti and one ultra, right? So what I plan to do is TU01, TU02, which is the wrapper ulti ultra, TU03, four, five, six, seven, and I picked this one up in Japan. This thing is mint. Super proud to have it, man. Because this is damn near max rarity other than the ugly dual terminal copy. And then TU08. And then we get to Astro Pack. Astro Pack has three ultimate rares, a bunch of supers, bunch of ultras. But the ultras and the supers, I don't feel like they'll survive max rarity if they get reprints. And a lot of them are dumb expensive. Like there's like, there, I believe there's like a rescue cat that's like 50 bucks. Like bro. <laughs> It'll be a cold day in hell when I pay $50 for a super rare. That's not like CP and earlier. So yeah, these are Astro Pack. I'm going to only collect the ultis and all of these I picked up in Japan. I believe these two I have extras of. By the way, any of these cards are going to be in my TCG player. So you guys can pick them up there. But yeah, uh, everything was mint. I saw this one up for sale for like 500 bucks and I was really wanting to pull the trigger. But then I... I I decided against it. I waited, I got to Nagoya and I found this for like $150, mint condition. Like, let me show you, cause you guys are not gonna believe me. Editor, zoom in on this. Look at this thing, clean. It's clean. Super, super proud to own this one. Max Rarity Tour Guide and I don't think it'll ever be topped. Like never ever. These tournament cards are like literally the, the goats of all staples. And then we have Astro Pack up to eight. Again, all of uh, these two were in Japan. This one I cracked from another video in the past. I do plan on collecting OP as well. The problem with it is that OP has, so there's NA, there's NA enhanced, and then there's EU. I actually picked some up right here can see but then these turned out to be euro cards and I, I don't really want euro copies unfortunately so I am going to be looking for like NA enhanced versions because those are like the most beautiful copy 
after this, I think obviously Euro is the most impressive looking, but after that you have the NA and I want the NA copies most likely. So yeah, I, I want the NA enhanced, but <laughs> unfortunately these turned out to be, so I'm throwing them up on my TCG player. But yeah, I have zero OP cards, okay? Like I wanted to collect them. They had a lot there, but I was like piss broke after spending all my money on all these, you know? So <laughs> yeah, I spent over like 20 grand pretty much on everything. Here we get the premium pack, which you guys have seen before. This is premium pack two. Some of them I ended up grading. So I'm going to be replacing them soon. And then premium pack two. And that, I don't know what else to collect here. But I pretty much made space here for all of like the OPs as well as the rest that are coming out. If you guys have any suggestions on what to collect in terms of like promos that are like kind of, you know, more valuable. I don't know how else to explain it. But yeah, these are all like, I would say pretty high value cards, you know, like they're not they're not cheap. I think minimum you're talking about $50 a card in mint condition. So yeah, I mean, this is like two grand. 1k like, like it's just disgusting values right so even the astro pack like it's crazy crazy money and again as you can see they're all color coded eh? so like this is a yellow pack i really want to put the promo pack with them i just don't know how i'm gonna do it so maybe i can go into another 12 pocket binder where it would be like like this is the wrapper right so if we have four columns we have a wrapper here but then we have two free columns here that i don't know what to use for I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions. This is what I came up with right now. Uh, again, because TP has five, so you can put the card here. TU has two, so on and so forth. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Next up, we're going to be doing my GX binder collection. And this one, there has not been a lot of change. So like here, you can see SOD is completed. Pretty much everything here up until like SOI is completed. SOI is just missing, you know, the big two. And then I don't remember what goes in here, but I do need to replace this and this for non-Euro copies. Still the same thing pretty much. I did pick up Doom Dozer and I had a copy before, but my other copy had like a little bit of backware. So I'm really happy to pick up this one. This was from Mahad. She's a collector on Instagram. She had like a fire sale. She ended up selling like, I think her whole collection or something. So I bought what I think was a good addition to my collection. So Doom Dozer. And then we go into Enemy of Justice here and I'm starting to expand. So we see here, I picked up these two. This was from Mahad as well. I don't remember where I got this one from, probably Japan. We move on to Power of the Duelist from Mahad, pretty much all of these. She's a pack opening fiend, so yeah. <laughs> Cyber Dark Impact, I cracked this one from before. These two, Japan. Strike of Neos, found a lot of these in Japan. Found a minty Air Neos. Sage of Silence, Neos Force, like all of these were found in Japan, so I'm really happy. I don't know why I have doubles here. Wait a minute. I have to take one of these out. <laughs> I have to check conditions. They're not in any order or anything like that. I'll probably get to that once I have the set completed. Because, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like all the sets are 25 ultis, right? So for 25 ultis plus two wrappers, it's 27. So you have 9, 18, 27, and then wrapper goes here. CDIP, 9, 18, 27. And now we have Strike of Neos, like I said. And Strike of Neos has 25 ultis, but it also has 10 secret rares. So we pretty much go from ultis, 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 and then this one would be a secret rare. And then I think there'll be nine secret rares. So maybe this would be a secret rare as well. I don't remember. If it's not, I would probably put a booster pack wrapper here, but I'm pretty sure it is 35 cards. And then you add the wrapper, so it's 36. So it's four pages. I'm pretty sure that this is another secret rare here. Again, everything here was in Japan. Plague Wolf, this was, I cracked. I actually pulled this one, sent it in, got the nine. So I just cracked it. These were from Mahad, all of them, mint condition. Or at least these two were from Mahad. I don't remember where I got these. Maybe it was from Mahad as well. I don't know. We have a uh, tactical evolution. My wife pulled this, bought this in Japan. And then Mahad, Japan, Japan. Gladiator's Assault, this one, I had a lot of the, these cards, but pretty much like this one was pulled. Oh, I remember where I got these. These were from actually a collection that I, that was sold to me. So one, two, three, four, five. These were from, the guy opened a lot of blisters and blisters, you can't pull this, you can't pull that. You can only pull like the cheaper, shittier <laughs> secret rares. But yeah, Gladiator's Assault has 15 secret rares. So it, it, again, it's not like Tactical Evolution where you have like the perfect layout. With Gladiator's Assault, you're gonna have to 
play around a little bit so you can see here there's the alties the, it still has 25 alties and it has a european exclusive alti glass was just a mess bro it's like the ultimate collector set check out the video i did on it if you haven't but uh yeah i mean it's it's pretty much everything here is north american but i am missing like the big ones right necro face freaking magic formula and then these alties i i grabbed all in japan this one i bought from a uk brother um and then here these are all japan pickups phantom darkness light of destruction obviously i'm gonna need way more slots so i don't even know how i'm gonna do this in the future once i get more of these cards but for now uh these are gonna be like a long ways away anyway so it is what it is uh, but these were all like mint all all pack fresh in japan and then another one here so yeah, that's pretty much the update. I, I pretty much expanded to AOJ to all the way like to Light of Destruction. I'm picking up where I can. And again, if you have any of these cards in mint condition, message me, I will pay extremely well. Like you see PSA 9, I'll pay over PSA 9 price if your cards are really minty. But yeah, that's pretty much the <laughs> GX binder. That's all the binders I have to show you guys today. But... I do have a lot of stuff that I picked up that are like extras that I felt like were really cheap. All right, so I'm gonna adjust the lighting real quick because I'm gonna show you guys stuff that's not in the binders. And we're gonna start off with Duelist Pack Kaiba. I ended up picking up this, remember from the last video that I made where I cracked a slab. So I bought these two guys and now I'm pretty much close to completing like the DPKB set. I really want to start collecting these because they have some exclusive cards in them and I feel like they're collectible overall. Not just the Duelist Pack Kaibas, I mean like all of them in general. I think that they are great collectibles and they look fantastic. So that's Duelist Pack Kaiba. The second thing is I bought these in order to grade. This is like... A mint mint card the only thing it has is like some excess cardboard because it wasn't cut properly i'm not sure how psa is gonna treat this but this is one of the most beautiful cards in the game so and then power tool dragon ancient fairy dragon these were like pack fresh i bought them in fuku fuku torica and what more can i say bro like <laughs> just gorgeous gorgeous cards this is a tin exclusive and look at the hollow foil on this the only thing that's wrong with this one is the white corner and all of them pretty much have that. I've never seen an ancient fairy dragon that doesn't have this. So yeah, it's a damn shame, but I, I, I think it can still gem in my opinion. So that's ancient fairy dragon. That's power tool dragon. Again, I'm not going to show you, but it's mint. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> it's mint. This one, I probably won't be subbing in. If you guys want to pick it up, you can. This is absolutely mint. So if you're trying to pick, add something to your collection, that's like really, really nice condition. I would definitely recommend this copy right here. Very nice. Next up is another card that in my opinion is absolutely slept on. And that is the retrain of demise and ruin. Okay, so the Ruin is dumb expensive. It's like 100 bucks. But <laughs> this one goes right along Ruin. And I, in my opinion, I think that this is a better art than the Ruin. But bro, this card is like 35 bucks. Like this is literally one per case. And it is an absolutely gorgeous artwork. It's limited to 20th rarity. I don't think it'll get reprinted because it's such an ass card. And not only that, you add the fact that when we got this in the TCG, we got it in a rare form like overall i think that this card is just criminally undervalued and i picked up a bunch of them i'm gonna throw them up on the website i bought them for like 27 dollars, so i'm gonna be selling for like 35 and if you guys are interested you guys can pick it up at strictlyseal.com slash japan but yeah i <laughs> bought what i could of this card whenever i saw them i ended up picking them up next up i picked up a lot of na alties okay these are pretty much pack fresh cards and <laughs> I, I, yeah, like, look at this. Like, they were selling them like crazy. Look at that, complete RDS sets. Here we have, yeah, still RDS, EEN, SOD, SOD, uh, CRV. There's no, like, big hitters. There's definitely no, like, Cyber Dragons or anything like that. But, like, can you go wrong buying, like, OG pack fresh alties? Like, look at this incredible look at that fet yeah <laughs> it doesn't stop there like there's more so like these are the supers they just threw these in if anybody wants these like happy to sell them to you for like a decent price everything here is pack fresh mint ioc ultras some fet on limb alties and a db1 gardener just some super rares some secret rares from the og sets 
also found these like mint condition and then some more alties <laughs> yeah they're, they're like yeah i <laughs> it's it's complete sets of sod all the way up to like een in excluding like the big cards some more like uh secrets and alties uh, these ones i did not pick on these are the extras that i had from whatever the, some more alties like this one is not mint condition so it didn't go in my binder but uh it was like i think a lot of people would be okay with this condition so yeah just a ton of alties like i said man i cleaned house over there <laughs> like doom cows uh look at that mermail abyss belial splendid to a latin so yeah like, I, I picked up a lot of cards there and i felt like a lot of these were like really really cheap in my opinion i think it was a great purchase but you can let me know in the comments down below if you guys are interested in any of these i don't know if i'll be able to list these a lot of them will be on my tcg player but if you guys are interested in like the og alties you can just write me an email and just tell me the list and what you're buying them for knowing that they are mint condition and then i'll either like accept or decline your offers for them but yeah that's the <laughs> ultis and i also picked up these two to start my ots packs but unfortunately they're euro so these are also going to be for sale probably going to throw them up on tcg player if you are interested in them let me know and i'll let them go to you but yeah that's pretty much the whole lot this was like an hour recording so <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed that my voice is completely gone let me know your thoughts in the comments wait 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 there's still one more thing i completely forgot to show you guys this in the last video in the part one because this is more like sealed it's not cards but i picked up over 70 packs of cybernetic revolution asian english check this out just insane but these did all sell so these are gone to their new owners this is the new owner is the guy that you guys saw in the collection video jummy he's pretty much the goat of asian english collecting and he has like probably the most sealed product i've ever seen he ended up buying my enemy of justice box as well and pretty much all my crv packs but yeah, I did pick these up. <laughs> I forgot to include them. This was like over $5,000 purchase. And then he also bought my Asian English Crimson Crisis booster packs. Yeah, this was a really good deal for me because I really needed some Japanese yen to buy stuff over there. So <laughs> it, it, it worked out. But yeah, that's the pretty much complete collection of everything that I picked up. This was like over $25,000 worth of purchases. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you guys want anything I showed in the video, hit me up through email. I'll be able to get back to you guys and give you guys some pricing. Or if you guys have an offer, make my job easier. I'll accept. I'll be like, okay, yeah, sure. That's fine. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys want to support the channel, pick up your own arcane sleeves. These are the gold version. Some of my favorite sleeves. My goodness. So nice. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.